Start K-Force, select the More tab, choose Games. We're going to create a new game. This takes us to the Game Information view. Our game today is a fast pitch softball tournament game. So while the coaches are meeting the umpire at home plate, flipping the coin to determine the home team, we're going to go ahead and enter the field location and the comment and the weather. So now the coach is returned, handed off the lineups to the official scorekeeper, and the Hurricanes will be the visiting team, and we haven't entered them yet uh, because we haven't seen them. We're the Rebels, and we've played the Blast, but we haven't seen the Hurricanes, so we'll enter them as a new team. And then we'll select our Rebels as the home team. and now we're ready to enter the starting lineup. When time is short I try and enter the lineup from the bottom up. The Hurricanes are batting nine with a flex player. In terms of entering the lineup this is the equivalent of American League pitcher with a designated hitter. So we enter the flex player in the eleventh spot. We leave the tenth spot empty and enter the batters in the one through nine spots. The reason we leave the tenth spot open is because K-Force goes through the batting order until it reaches the first empty batter slot after the ninth batter. If we enter a player in the tenth spot, K-Force will assume that player is batting and you can bat up to sixteen players. So we'll leave the tenth spot empty and enter the defensive only players in the eleventh spot and later. So like I said, K-Force supports up to sixteen batters and it also supports up to thirty innings. So we'll continue to work our way backward through the lineup. Now I'm using the emulator to record this tutorial and I'm being very deliberate and taking my time and, and pushing each of the uh, buttons and selecting each item and then using the keyboard to type in the names. But as it turns out this is very close to real time. The keyboard on the phone itself is very efficient and it's very easy to very quickly press the add lineup entry, enter the player's number, enter the player's name, select done, and then enter the position. So we'll enter the number four batter and then we'll finish up uh, the lineup after the first pitch. It's perfectly okay to finish entering the lineup after the beginning of the game. So press batter up just in time for the first pitch to the leadoff batter. I'll score the first two balls. Notice at the top K-Force reports batter one. Touch there to navigate directly to this batter in the lineup. During the game this is how you quickly switch to the lineup view and enter pinch hitters and pinch runners. Between pitches you should have enough time to get uh, at least one batter added to the lineup. Back to batter up. I'll score another ball and then press BB at the right to score a walk. Touch the button with the image of the batter to go to batter up. Press batter 2 at the top to navigate to the lineup view and add Justine to the lineup. I have enough time between batters to enter Alexa also. While I'm doing this, I always glance up to make sure I don't miss any pitches. As long as the ball isn't put in play, it's easy. I just remember the pitch sequence and enter it 
after I finished with the lineup. Batter up again and we see number 19 Justine is up. After I score the first pitch to Justine, notice the zero for zero that appears next to her name. Also notice that first base is light blue indicating the base runner. Justine draws a walk. Notice the base runner is automatically advanced to second base. Batter up. Uh, Alexa receives two strikes. Now when scoring on paper, the plus sign is used to indicate two strike foul balls. They usually run across the bottom of the at bat box. When K-Force gets to four two strike fouls, the notation changes to conserve space. And Alexa strikes out. And batter up to Laisha, who receives a strike, a ball, another ball, strike, foul ball, foul ball. Then on the seventh pitch, a ball brings the count to full. And Laisha strikes out swinging. batter up to Lindy, the center fielder. Lindy receives a ball, then a called strike. Score this by tapping the strike box a second time. Another ball, then a foul ball. Score this by tapping the strike box a third time. The fifth pitch is a ball, then Lindy flies out. Just touch the eight in center field to score the fly out. Touch batter up and K4 switches to the top of the order for the Rebels. Touch batter 1 to jump to the lineup view. I'm going to enter the lineup from the bottom of the order again. It's going to be much quicker for the Rebels since I don't have to enter jersey numbers and names. Now unlike the Hurricanes, the Rebels are batting their entire roster so I'm going to have a tenth batter here. Notice how the background color has changed. K-Force uses gold to indicate the visiting team and green for the home team. In addition to the colors, the team name is listed in the navigation bar at the top. Again, I'm being very deliberate in selecting the items. Entering this information on an iPhone is much faster. As I said, the Rebels are batting their entire roster of 11. Since there are not 11 defensive positions, you can either enter the bench players as X, leave the position blank, or enter it as DH. Although strictly speaking, they're not designated hitters. I like to enter them as X, that way it doesn't look like I just forgot to enter their position. In a real game situation, you may or may not have enough time to get through a lineup of 11 players uh, during the pitching warm-up between innings, but we're going to go ahead and get all 11 in here. The Rebels are up to bat, and on a 1-1 count, Kim grounds out shortstop to first base. Notice Kim is now 0 for 1 and batter up to Kristen who flies out to second base. Touch four a second time to record the fly out. Batter up for Rebecca the shortstop. She hits into the somewhat rare 9-3 put out. Touch the 9 and it'll assume K-Force will assume a fly out. So touch 9 again and then three for the 9-3 put out. 